Welcome back, guys. This is part four of making a game like Cannabalt. We're gonna be procedurally generating platforms. And we're gonna generate them at random heights and random distances from the previous platform based on the player's current speed and jump potential. Just before we get started, gonna implement something that I forgot to implement all the way back in part two, where after we added our horizontal speed, we were supposed to make it so that our ability to hold down the jump button longer and longer was actually directly proportional to how much speed we actually had. So let's implement that really quick. Opening up the player script, all we really need is to have a cap on this max hold jump time. We'll call it max max hold jump time because that's a cool name. And then we'll be altering this value, making sure it's anywhere from zero to max max. So we're gonna go down to where we actually adjust our velocity. Right here where we're altering our acceleration based on our velocity ratio, we're also gonna adjust this max hold jump time. And it's gonna be out of this max max velocity ratio. And that's gonna make it so that if our velocity is zero, our max hold jump time is nothing and we can't hold the jump button down any longer than just the instant where we press it. And then when our velocity is really high at its max, we can hold the jump button down for the actual maximum amount of time. And we can briefly watch that work. As you can see, starting out, small, very small jumps I'm able to get. And as I get a little faster here, and I hold down the jump button now, I get a lot more height there. Quickly starting it over, you can see how small it is comparatively. Almost nothing. All right, now that we have that, we can actually generate our new platforms, or we have everything we need, I should say. All right, so basically what we're gonna do is have one platform, one ground, generate another ground. So, as soon as this ground enters the scene completely, so when its right side is touching the right side of the screen here as it's coming in, as soon as we get past this point, we're gonna have some logic inside this ground script generate a new ground. So to do that, we're gonna wanna know, one, what's the right side of this ground, and two, what's the actual right side of the camera, this actual screen space. Um, luckily, if you remember back in part one, I mentioned that I put the camera in a position where the lower left corner is zero, zero. Now that's gonna actually pay off because you can see that the positioning is based on the exact center of the camera. So the right side of the camera is actually zero plus the position on the x-axis plus that same amount again. So let's go to our ground. All right, and we have our ground height and we have two things, we have our ground right and we have our screen right. Our screen right, we only need here, and that is the main camera. Grab that, and grab its position, and multiply that by two, and that's it. Our actual ground right, we'll have to calculate in our update, fixed update, since that's constantly updating because the ground is constantly moving. So ground right, and similarly to how we got our ground height by utilizing the, the Y position, adding on the collider size in the Y direction, we're gonna do the same thing only with the collider size in the X direction and the X position. So that's our transform position X plus collider size X divided by two. And then, create our generate ground function here and then we'll call it as long as ground right if is less than screen what is happening screen right then we're going to generate our ground but we only want to do it once so let's introduce a uh, boolean here did generate ground false and then as long as we haven't if not Generate ground. And then once we do generate the ground, did generate ground, true. And that way we only do it once. And the simplest way to generate another ground, since all grounds in this game are gonna work exactly the same, except for where they're positioned, we can just reinstantiate a copy of ourselves. 
a reference to our own game object, and that'll instantiate a new game object based on us. And now we'll want to adjust its positioning a little bit. And to do that, we're going to need our collider and the player. So the collider is simple enough. It's already attached to it because it's attached to our current game object. Uh, go collider, get component, and we're going to grab our box collider component. And then let's grab the player the same way we did with the other scripts. And for now, just to test, we can set our position somewhere just off the screen. So we have our screen right. Add a little bit of space there, say 30 equals. And position.y can just be whatever our current position y is. And then assign that. And lastly, what we want to do here, let's remove this test ground and the second one at least and then remove this parallax script because we don't want it to constantly loop, but we still want to actually move. So we can go back to our update here and we can actually move ourselves. Again, subtracting the player's velocity. And then reassigning. And then another quick thing we can do is say, whenever we get too far to the left, we can actually destroy ourselves so that there's not an infinite amount of game objects like this in the scene. And we can actually utilize our ground right because that's when we know that we're completely out of the scene, when our ground right is actually less than zero. Destroy. And we'll go ahead and return as well. All right, let's play to see what that looks like. Immediately generates another ground, and it should just loop like this forever. Yep. I haven't actually set random heights or distances, so they just keep appearing in the exact same place. Okay, so now let's actually add some variety to our generating platforms. And we should be able to easily do that here. Now the easiest thing to do is actually to set the Y position first because we're gonna have to calculate what the maximum height that the player can jump is. And that's the maximum randomness that we can set for our Y position. Maximum height, here we go. So for the maximum height that the player can jump, it's actually made up of two components. The first component is the maximum height that the player can get while holding the jump button because no gravity actually takes effect there. So we're gonna call that H1, so there's height one. And that's basically just that same velocity applied over the amount of time that the player could possibly hold the jump button. So that's our player jump velocity multiplied by whatever the current max hold jump time is. And that's how high the player could possibly jump while holding the jump button. The second component of our jump is, we're gonna call it H2. And that's gonna be the natural jump arc without holding the jump button. So after you let go of the jump button, gravity starts to take effect. So your velocity gets lower and lower and lower as you're still going up incrementally smaller until you hit that peak where your velocity is zero and then you start falling down. So right at that peak where your velocity is zero, that's actually your maximum height. So we need the height from the top of this whole jump time height to the peak. Well, there's no definitive time for that. It's just gravity working against your velocity. So in order to know that time, we need to know the ratio of your velocity to the gravity to know how long it should take for your velocity to become zero based on the gravity doing its work. So we'll call that time t, and it's actually just your player.jump velocity divided by whatever that gravity is. And now that we have our time, we can solve h2. Now generally to calculate distance, you normally just need rate and time. And that's what we have here, jump velocity times time. However, because we're dealing with gravity, rate is consistently changing. So we need a second component here that accounts for gravity. And that's described as one half the gravity multiplied by the time squared. 
multiplied. And that'll be the height of our natural jump arc. So then finally, our actual max jump height is h1 plus h2. And the actual y position of that in the world is the player's current y position plus that max jump height. And that's going to be the highest point that we can possibly make our next platform and still have the player be able to jump to it. Now, again, going back to our first part, we want to give the player always the benefit of the doubt. They're not computers. They're not going to perfectly time everything. So we don't want to have an instance where our platform actually generates at this maximum Y, where it is just possible, if you're perfect, to land on it. So we're just going to say max Y times equals 0.7. So we get about 70% of that as sort of a buffer. And then because we want platforms that are also below the player as well as above, we're gonna also have a minimum Y. And we're gonna set that equal to not exactly zero because we wanna see the platform, so one. And then we'll set our actual Y, actually, <laughs> to be some random number in between the min Y and the max Y that we have here. And then finally, keep in mind that this Y position is where we want our ground height, not exactly the position of our platform. So we have to make sure to subtract that collider height from our position in order to come back down so that the ground height gets at that position instead of our actual platform. So let's go ahead and subtract go collider size Y two divided by two. All right, let's see how that looks. All right, it looks like it's at the exact same position. And again, and again, probably because I never even set the variable here, actual y. All right, let's see what that looks like. All right, a little lower. All right, it, oh, okay. Um, I think we forgot to reset our, yeah, we forgot to reset our actual ground height because we altered our y position after actually creating our object so our ground height got set already so we just have to reset our ground height and we'll just grab this exact same ground height over here and then after we set our y position let's just do it here at the very end and we'll set it on the actual ground object so we'll say ground this is the go ground Go ground dot ground height. Go dot transform dot position dot y. And this is go collider. There we go. All right, let's see what that looks like. Let's also move our player above this ground to start off with. All right, generating. All right, landing correctly. They are generating at varied heights. That's good. It's kind of keeping it low to the ground, I guess, because my height can't get too high yet. Not bad, though. Looking pretty good. And nothing ever feels impossible, which is exactly what... Oh, that was close. <laughs> All right, but everything looks pretty good. All right, stop it there. All right, now let's generate them at random distances based on the player's speed. All right, so coming back to our code here. Now let's actually, I just thought of this. Let's move this um, over here because we're gonna take advantage of this actual Y variable again later when we're doing our next calculation. And I just noticed that our gravity here is supposed to be negative. So the heights are probably just a little off or maybe the time was, because our gravity is currently negative, but we. We don't care about the actual direction of our gravity. We just want to know what its core value is, its absolute value, you could say, the magnitude. So probably the time here was negative and then the gravity here was negative and I guess it worked itself out. But we want those values to be negative because we're gonna again use this time variable again later. So, all right, so we want to know how far our player can possibly jump. Now again, that'll be our distance and we know that distance again equals rate times time. And we know our rate because that's our actual player velocity in the X direction. However, we're missing that crucial component of time. Well, we technically have half the time. We have this time here. 
And that time is the time it takes the player to reach the top of their jump arc. What we don't have is the time it takes for the player to get from the maximum Y and fall all the way down to the actual Y where we're positioning ourselves. So we have time one, T1, and that equals T. It actually equals T plus the maximum hold jump time because there's the jump arc time plus the time that you're holding down the jump button. And then in order to get that T2, the time it takes to fall from max Y to the actual Y, we're gonna use our position formula here. However, we don't need this first component of velocity because our initial velocity at the top of the jump arc is just gonna be zero. And then we're gonna do some algebra to reverse some of these components to pull out that time from our position, right? So T2, and not getting too much into the physics here, but this is how it would be implemented. So we'll take our square root because we're squaring our time of two times because of the one half our distance that we're traveling, which is our max y minus our actual y, and then divide that by the gravity. Again, the negative gravity, because our gravity is negative, player.gravity. And that'll be what our time 2 is. So total time equals t1 plus t2 of our jump. And then we can multiply that by the rate to get our maximum jump distance. Max x is total time times player dot velocity.x. And then for our min, we'll say it's something like the screen right, since that's where we're being generated from, and just add on maybe something like five, five units there. And then again, we'll get our actual x and set that equal to the random of min and max x. And then our actual position x will be our actual x and then instead of subtracting, we're going to actually add on because normally the center would be right on that screen right position. So we're going to add on our collider position so that the left side of our platform is wherever this X is. And that's go collider dot size X divided by two. And then one or two last things similar to how we did with our max Y, our max X, we're going to want to clamp here to something like 70% again making it a little easy on the player. And then our Y position, let's say we get some kind of a luck streak going where our ground is consistently, randomly being higher than our current ground. And so we're getting higher and higher and higher and eventually we'll just go off the screen. We're gonna want an actual maximum for that one. So let's say it's something within visible range. Where is our ground test? So what's a good height there? Maybe like this should be the maximum ever. And that's a 2.7. All right, so let's say if position y is greater than 2.7 equals 2.7. So just clamp that right there. All right, let's see what that looks like. All right, immediately something's off. We're getting generated way too, way too uh, far to the left. I should say, um, let's see, actual X range max, max is that. Okay, our max is off. So we actually want it to be this distance, but add on where the actual end of our platform currently is, which is max X plus equals our ground right, because we want that to be the jumping point. All right, let's see if that fixed it. Much better. Way better. Okay, that's getting a little high. Yeah, some of these heights look a little too high. That was way too high. Okay, something's off. Why is it generating? What? <clears throat> okay. So it's generating the height off. All of a sudden, the height looked good and now the height's off. What's wrong with the height? Max Y, player position Y. Is it because the player position is off? If the player position, yeah, it's gotta be it. It's like, okay, so if I'm falling as the player, if the ground hits at that point right as I'm falling, 
then it's going to calculate my jump from this height, not from where I would jump from, which is the ground. Okay. I think that back. All right, so we just got to, this isn't the actual player height. I mean, the player position. This should be the ground height. Not only that, I should be adding that on before I do the 70%, or I'm sorry, after I do the 70%. So I guess just max y equals max jump height. Okay, um, we can just get rid of max y probably um, equals jump height times 0 0.7. And then plus equals this ground height. Is that correct? I believe it is. All right, now we shouldn't have any unfair heights anymore. Watch me speak too soon. That was actually pretty good. <laughs> That was really close, I'm not sure. I actually made it. Maybe it should be less than 70%. Not bad, I actually missed that one, I died. Ooh, all right, yeah, I didn't jump high enough. So all these look like they're all my fault, and I'm gonna go with that. If we need any more tweaking, we can fix it in post. All right, um, I'm pretty happy actually. We got the ground generation fully working. It's calculating the player's maximum jump height, the maximum jump distance, and generating our grounds on a range of those values. In the next part, we're gonna cover actually dying so the player can hit the side of the platform and cause a game over right there. And also having obstacles. We'll um, randomly generate obstacles on top of these platforms. And then when the player runs into one of those, runs into one of those obstacles, it's going to slow them down. That's what we'll cover in the next part. So finally, if you did like this video, if you learned something cool, like the video, subscribe to the channel. This series is almost over, but there's plenty more in the works. So stick around for that. All right, I'm out of here. I have to go walk my dog. Until next time.